Hello, everybody. Here we are for another afternoon astonishments. And today it is just me and just Steve, but it's going to be fun just the same. We've oh, had yeah. we've had a little little bit of a uh, cut loose time like this before, and you know it went pretty well. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, we'll be in All it. Right. Well, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to have fun. You know that's my motto. I'm going to have fun. Me so. too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, really. So, you okay so, today? Are you okay today, buddy? Are you? I'm okay today. Boy? Yeah, yeah. Are having having a good everything? day. I, I'm actually uh, practicing a ton. You know, I'm having so much fun working oh, on really? some card moves, and it's been a nice uh, distraction with all the whatnot. But um, yeah, to you know, the, over the weekend, something unfortunate did happen. Um, yeah, it did. We lost uh, one of the magical greats guy named John Mendoza. For those that don't know, we're going to do a little bit of a, a dive into John's magic today uh, and look at some of the, some of the greater hits. And uh, really, John was a voice of a generation. I, I know that I got the fruits of that because I, you know, I, I knew a couple of his students. One in particular was a guy that was a huge influence on me, uh, Chris Kenner. Right. And he was, he spoke of John highly often. And I know that he was a big influence on his magic and, uh, our very own uh, Chris Korn, uh, who's come and done events here with us at CC. He was definitely one of the Mendoza students. and Very and, close to John. And you're, and you're from that area too, right, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wasn't a student, but I've seen him lecture. And I've run into him, you know, several times. And, you know, what can you say about him? He's just a very nice man, you know. And uh, whenever someone like a John Mendoza dies, I feel like one of my uncles died. Right. You know what I mean? It's like... That's how I feel about those those people. When you see Skinner, one of these guys, it's like they're like these like when your uncle dies. You know, it's like he was the cool guy that you really looked up to, and you know, and now he's just kind of gone. You know. And those guys like that, like the ones that do like really great magic like that, they almost I know it's an illusion, but you have this like feeling in your heart. I know I do when I watch these guys. It's like they're never gonna die. They're gonna live forever because they're they are like superheroes, like we were saying, right? It's like. It, they're, they're larger than life. <laughs> yeah. And it's like interesting to think of that just a generation before them were a bunch of really great magicians that there's no video on or very little, you know, right. and there's not, and magic books aren't being published as much. And the magic books that are about them are written about somebody else looking back on what they did as opposed to now the mad, the culture, I guess, of magic is people tend to want to document their, their work in a book. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and that's generally what people do. So there's some record of it. Right. Yeah. But what, what a, what a mind, a mind trip for these guys, right? They maybe heard a story about a thing. They might've seen someone do something that looked like the guy. They might've been fortunate enough that they actually saw the genuine article in person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's just like active imagination, right? Like all the time to like, imagine how these things are going to be and do them for people. And that's, you know, it's almost, like they, they had stronger creative muscles than we do because they had to, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> I saw John lecture twice. Okay. Right? One was at uh, the Midwest Magic Jubilee in St. Louis. Okay. And it seemed like he had like the prime spot, right? Like the four o'clock on the last day, the one everyone's going to be at, like that right. kind of a deal. Right. And it was just like a, a room, like a big room with about – 200 people guys standing on chairs it was just like you know looking everyone's like trying to like stand on tables do whatever they literally could. standing room only <laughs> yeah it was just crazy and then the last time i saw him was probably just a year ago maybe two years ago he lectured at the local club and there were 25 people there. wow you know wow. and he just came in and did you know did his stuff and he was fantastic i mean just unbelievable you know just all the good stuff that's really awesome, man. Yeah. I, well, I, I really admire his magic and, and his thinking, right? He definitely has some different thinking. And I think that he was an innovator in a lot of things. I think so, too. Um, and I want to, well, let's start with, let's start looking at some clips. And this one is interesting because this was always, John considered this to be his opener, mm -hmm. right? This was his way to basically establish that he, like, if you would, if you have an uncle that did some magic or you knew had a friend that did some magic tricks, he's trying to separate himself from that. And this opening routine was his way to say, hey, look, I, without saying, I, I'm a little bit better than those guys that you've seen before without saying those words. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's, so let's get into the thing here. And let me uh, do this. Here we go. And I think we can just, you can see this, Steve? Oh, I know those people. You know those people. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we're all right. We're in. Got it. There you go. Uh, my name's John Mendoza. I need to warm up a little bit, kind of a warm up starter. So I'm going to do something that's kind of kind of easy with some dice. It's not really a trick. It's not going to fool you. It's not. It's not going to fool you. It's not a trick. It's just kind of a show off thing. It's not really a trick. <clears throat> it's not going to fool you. It's one of those I can do it, you can't things. It's just a fancy way to shake up dice. <laughs> shake the dice like this, and your friends will say, man, I don't want to play Yahtzee with him. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. Kind of fancy, huh? See, but I had a problem whenever I did it. I could never see what number I wrote. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> I thought if I could pick them up in pairs, they wouldn't have time to stand up like that. But that shows you how wrong you can be. <clears throat> Now, there's one way you can do it so they won't stand up, and that's if you start with them in a little bit square like this. Now, you cover them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, nothing. See, they just don't do it when you do it like that. In fact, they're so big, they almost don't fit inside the cup. So if you start with them in a little square like that, you shake them all night, never get them to stand up. Wow. Real time. <laughs> I'll show you something kind of crazy. I thought if they're always going to stand up like this, and I can't see what number I rolled, I might as well learn to do something with them. So this is what I learned. How many dice, how many spots on top of that die? Five. Very good, very fast. Okay. <laughs> Would you believe if I told you there's a five on top of that stack? Yes. <laughs> I got some, <laughs> got some land I want to sell you. What's on top there? <laughs> you know, a lot of people think I cheat when I do that. So I'm going to ask you, would you, sir, just pick any one of the five dice? Any one at all? <laughs> I'm going to shake these, and when I get them onto the cup so I can't see them, I want you to roll that die, okay? okay. Whatever number you roll, I'm going to make come on top. But make sure that mine are all under the cup so I can't see them. Make sure your roll stays on the table, okay? Okay, go ahead and roll. Six. Good, six. I'm really <laughs> glad you rolled six. Because I have never in my career missed on a six by more than two. Okay? <laughs> Well, the problem was the problem was that the, the number you rolled was too big. It doesn't work with big ones. Little ones work. Fine. <laughs> you know why big ones work and little ones don't? What? See, you're not paying attention because big ones. Oh. Don't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trying to drive you to drink, wouldn't it? I don't know about you, but I'm ready. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> How do you not love that? You know, well, I was thinking about that as we watched it, that, that first set, he comes out, he gets so much out of that first, uh, you know, that first uh, stack. Right. And, and he, he never was like, telegraphed he was like bringing him it. in, right? He's like, yeah. Telling a lot of jokes, talking real quiet. He got real quiet. He got real quiet. So you're like, what, 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 what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Never, ever says anything about what he's doing. Doesn't totally. even lead into it. So when it happens, you're like, whoa, look at that. You know? And then, of course, yeah. I mean, then then he just turns it from the stacking, which is amazing enough as it is. Then he puts some magic. magic to it. And then the magic just starts. So great. Stacking. And it's like punch, so punch, great. punch, 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 punch. Right? Like magic just kept on coming once it started. It just didn't stop until he was like, I need a drink. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of people do dice stacking. I haven't seen many people be able to make it entertaining and fun. Uh, and just like John said in the beginning there, it's like, this is a, I can do it. You can't totally, but then he went on to make it not that. Right. You know, but he let the air out of all the, all the sucker trick element of it. Right. Like all the things that would have been like a gotcha. He's like, look, I'm going to do the gotcha thing. And you're, don't worry about it. It's just, it's just the thing I do. <laughs> you got to warm up. Let the air out of all the, all the stuff that would sting. Right. But I, but I think what you said is really interesting. It's like, that's his opener. And I have seen him open with that. Right. Mm -hmm. I saw the, you know, I've seen that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it is a brilliant opener, isn't it? It's right. like people would think of it as a closer, but of course, every good opener is just a, like a half a turn away from a great closer. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and, it, and then in the show, he continues to do effects that if you look at them at the base level, they're very similar effects, but he's got so many other things going on that it's like, it's well balanced and you don't notice that that same effect might come along later. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that, since this comes from L and L, though, he probably wouldn't do those in a real show because John toured all over the place, right? He mm -hmm. he performed magic all over the world. He he would go on USO tours, I think, or military based tours, and that I guess that's USO. I, but I thought he alluded to the idea that he would do like 
he would do the the, the dice thing in the beginning and then he would close yes. with the, cups, with and the cups and balls or the chop cup but very similar effect wise yeah. and you yeah. just don't notice because it's dice and it's the shot and it's you know it's it's very different objects so you don't really your mind doesn't make the connection immediately that it, oh you might have been doing the same trick you know i don't think that i think there's so much different stuff that's hitting you that you don't you don't make that sort of connection yeah but, you know you know what's great too is that i guess he, at some point he you know he must have just decided i'm gonna do it anyway and see what happens because you normally wouldn't do that right you know I mean, it just goes to show you there's no reason to not try stuff that's right there are no rules rules are made to be broken right they're just yeah. sort of guidelines especially when it comes to performance right Right, absolutely absolutely yeah. that was fantastic that was really great. cool right yeah. all right so let's get into this next one this next one's a little bit more involved it's a little bit longer uh it's a card thing but well i don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil it because there's a lot think, going on here and it's pretty beautiful this is the one i think right the yeah, never mind go ahead let's see it, as far as i'm concerned this is the one yeah yeah i think this <laughs> is the one yeah yeah, this is this is the one. This is the one you you know. This is the one you, you paid the price of admission for was to watch John do this one. Exactly. Right? That's what I was trying to do. That. I don't want anybody to think I'm cheating. You mix them up. <laughs> yeah, let me make sure. I want to take one card out of here. The one you named. I don't want it used again. Let's take that out of here. Okay. I just don't want that used again. Okay, we're going to try a little experiment. This doesn't always work, so I don't want you to feel bad if it doesn't work, but uh, it's not really a trick. It's not going to fool you. It's just a little experiment. <laughs> and and uh, what I'm going to do is deal out some hands of poker. Now, to participate in this experiment, you don't need to know how to play poker, so don't worry anything about that. We're going to try a little experiment, and I'm going to ask if you would, do you mind taking a hand for me? And Janelle? Yes. Frank? And if you would take a hand. What I'd like you to do, I'd like you to look at your hands, and I would like you to each think of a card, one of the cards in the hand. Do me a favor. Don't tell anybody else what the card is. If you've got friends or something behind you, don't say, I'm going to think of this one. Just, I want you to be the only one that knows what the card is. Do you have one? No one? No one? Got one? Everybody got one? You want to mix your hands up or anything a little bit? Or? No? You're happy? Can I have your hand? Don't forget your card. It might be just a little while before I ask you about it, okay? Right, don't forget your card. It might be a little while before I ask you about it. Don't forget your card. Might be a little while before I ask you about it. <laughs> Can you guess what I'm going to say? <laughs> Don't forget your card. Might be just a little while before I ask you about it. Okay. Now, like I said, there's not really a not really a trick. It's just more of an experiment. Doesn't always work. So, we'll see what happens. I'm going to deal out hands of poker. I, I'll deal out five this time. Save a little time. In a minute, and in a minute, we're going to try a little experiment. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is show you each of the hands one at a time, and I'm going to ask you if you see your card in the hand, the card you're thinking of. If you do, tell me that you see it, but don't tell me which one it is, and we'll have a little fun, okay? So what I mean. You're thinking of a card, right? Do you see the card in that hand? No. You see your card in that hand? You do? You do? You see your card in that hand? No. Okay. I'm going to start with you, Janelle. I'm going to ask you one at a time if, these, if each of these cards is yours. I want you to just say no to me five times. In other words, I want you to lie to me in your card. Okay? Just say no five times. Okay? Is that your card? No. 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 A lot of experience in saying no five times, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you see a card in that hand? Yes. You do. You, I'm sorry, do you see a card in that hand? No. You do not. I want you to just look at all five cards. Don't focus on anyone in particular. Look at all five. Okay, don't fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set one aside here for you. You see your card in that hand? No. No. How about that hand? No. Okay, do you see your card in that hand? Yes. Okay, you concentrate on all five cards. I don't want to look at her. Watch your eyes. <laughs> That's very good. I'm going to set one aside here for you. Now we'll see how the experience... Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I didn't mean to forget you. Don't say anything about your card. We'll get back to that. <clears throat> what card did you? were you thinking of? Ace of Diamonds. Ace of Diamonds. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Janelle, what card were you thinking of? The Eight of Spades. The Eight of Spades. Of the Six of Hearts. The Six of Hearts. Unbelievable. Isn't that crazy? Uh, <laughs> 
Now, Frank, I didn't mean to forget you, but no, don't tell anybody what your card is. This is not one of these tricks. It's not going to be that card. It's not going to end up in my shoe. You know, I just, I just want you to make sure that your card is really in there. And I won't look at your eyes because I don't want you to think I'm trying to focus on anything. Did you see your card in there? Yes. Is it in there? Okay. I want to make sure it's really in there. Now, this puts us in kind of an awkward position because if you did what I asked, you didn't tell anybody else what the card was, right? No, so nobody else knows what the card is except you. Right. Wow. And you didn't do like those magicians. You didn't take a card. You're just thinking of it, right? right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> one card out of 52. I'm going to take a chance and set one right down there in the middle of the pad. Would you tell the audience what card you were thinking of, Frank? Six of spades. The six of spades? Yes. The six of spades. Oh. Oh. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, wow, wow. That struck wow. me as very um, like Danny DRT's when he was doing that bit where he's going, so you didn't take a card out and put it back. You just looked at it, right? Wow, that's like, you know, just very <laughs> like, let me, let me uh, emphasize how unbelievable this is going to that's be. That's right. <laughs> you know? Let's, let's reiterate the conditions here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but what's, what's clever about it is he's not going, how fooled will you be? When I turn over this card and it's your, like like paving the way kind of a thing, which right. takes away the punch. He's just going, right. so you didn't even take it out. You just, and wow, that's amazing. You're just thinking about it. Right. It's very casual. It's like those, those little proving moments are sprinkled like salt, right? Like just like. Yes. <laughs> and they're so light and believable. Yeah, exactly. It's you like, it's like and, he's actually reacting in the moment. But yeah. Even though it's a canned line, he's like, yeah. oh, wow, you, you didn't even take, take one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and I mean, that's just a beautiful routine. It's really as good as those kind of tricks get. And for those of you that like that trick or, th or things like that, the method is just as satisfying as the trick is. Right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those cool tricks where it's, you know, and that's, that's the problem sometimes with, with falling in love with magic tricks, right? Sometimes you fall in love with a method rather than the actual, like yeah. the whole thing. And it, you know, sometimes bad magic sticks around because you're in love with them. You know? <laughs> it's definitely the kind of trick you'll do to yourself and giggle. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a fun one to practice and a fun one just to think about the concepts that are going on and how the whole thing works. Because it really is a brilliant thing. Because it's almost, almost a self-working trick with a little bit of handling, right? A little. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, man. It's yeah, I love pretty it. amazing. I really love it. It's really yeah. a cool thing. So another thing that, that John is really famous for is uh, he pioneered a certain area of the cups and balls effect, right? I don't want to say anything yet because we should watch the trick, but he is definitely a pioneer in a specific area of a thing that you can do with cups that's not just a cup, right? We'll, we'll talk about it afterwards, but really he's, you know, he, he was the guy that sort of paved the way for a lot of other things to come after him in, in Cups and Balls Magic. Even though it was already an ancient trick by the time John got a hold of it, someone came up with a new way of doing things. And uh, yeah, well, let's let's get into the thing. Let's, let's take a look here. It's really great. So this is John Mendoza doing the Cups and Balls his way. Okay, I'm going to finish this set with, with what is considered to be the oldest trick in Magic. <laughs> I tell you, these cups are solid gold, but I don't think you'd buy it this time. <laughs> this is three balls and three cups. That's one, two, three cups, and one, two, three balls. One, two, three cups, and one, two, three balls. Do everything fair. I'm going to put one to do there like that, no cheating, one to do there like that, and one to do there like that, no cheating. I'm going to show you some very simple magician's moves. I'm going to start by making this ball leave and join this one over here. Watch it, just like that. It takes a little touch, just like that, to put two over there, and then over there, just like that. <laughs> Now, if I wanted the ball to go over here, what I have to do is reach through here and take it, drop it back in that cup. That leaves just one there. Take it out of this cup, drop it in there. That leaves two there. And it goes down there. I'm going to do it again, and this time I'm going to do a very unusual move. This is called the double touch. I put one into there like that, one into there like that, and one into there like that. Touch, touch, touch. That leaves none there, none there, and all three right in the middle, just like that. Now, look at the women next to You know, I've studied this trick totally. and it's kind of confusing what is happening? because there's so many objects. There's like three balls and three cups. That's six objects. And so I thought that's too confusing. That's too hard for people to follow. So I'm going to do it with just two cups and two balls. 
and one hand. Cup, ball, brush, goes through just like that. <laughs> I'll do it again. One hand. Cup, ball, brush. The ball leaves there and goes right through there. One more time. Cup, ball, brush, right through just like that. <laughs> You know, people always ask me if the cups, if the cups, if the balls can go down, can they go up? Sure, just like this. Little tap to the bottom of the table, right up it comes, just like that. Leaving you with one there. You know what? Four objects is a little tough. <laughs> I mean, two balls, two cups, that's a little tough. So I'll do it with just two. The ball and a cup. One ball and one cup. Okay? I'm going to ask you to help me this time. I want you to take your fingers and put them just like that, so you hold that cup down. But before you do... I'll let people see. Can you peek under there, Frank? Your ball yeah, under there? Nothing. Put your fingers right on there. Nothing. Don't let anything get in or out of there, okay? okay. We're going to see what happens. Actually, the way this trick works, it's a trick cup. It's got a little secret bottom. See, if I just hit that bottom just right and let the ball go. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it one last time. This time, keep one eye on the cup, one eye on the ball, and one eye on the hand it goes into and I'll do it slow motion. I put the ball in the hand. <laughs> I blow. <laughs> That's bad breath, but a good trick. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and the ball goes right back. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I thought more about this thing, and you know, it isn't a question of how many. It's a question of the size. So the next time I do this trick, I use the big ones. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Really, really good. Oh, man, just one of the best cups and balls, really, you know. Really is. So John was the first guy that was privy to the idea of the combo set. And the combo set was the idea of taking one of those cups and making it into a chop cup. And those of you uh, here in CC, you know all about the chop cup. Well, having one of those cups look like just any of the other cups but be a chop cup, you get way, way, way ahead, as you can see with the routine. There's moves that are impossible any other way unless you have that, that extra special gaff in there. And Morrissey uh, in Canada, was the, they were a, a metal spinner that made the first combo cups. And John was the first one to get the combo cups, and he devised routines in the early 70s. And they influenced a generation of cups and balls workers. And, you know, being able to do just the one, that one beautiful thing where you have a ball sitting on top of a cup, you cover it, and now it's gone. You can't beat that. That moment right there is just tough. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's real magic, you know. And then you combine that with other cups and balls technology, the other moves that you can do with it. It's like it sort of makes it impenetrable after that, you know. What's really great about his routine in particular is all that stuff, but the construction of it. You know, the way he's starting with three, coming down to one and then finishing with the whole big thing at the end. And then the, like the things he chose, like those balls don't even look like they fit in those cups. That's right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Well, so that's, that's the beauty of that. So that many Paul choices. Fox design, right. That Paul Fox design, it gives you that, it, it gives you that illusion when you lift it up, it looks like it can't fit in there. Like it shouldn't be in there. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's very big, like too big, yeah, too big. <laughs> yeah. Too big. Uh, Garnet, the trick that we saw uh, John do with the uh, with the playing cards was called routine poker mental, and then the other ones just what the, are what they are uh, the dice stacking and then the cups and balls. But the cups and balls specifically, I think, is the Mendoza cups and balls because it's that you know that that routine using that special that special extra gaff. Right. Um, and those are out there. You have to go and look. There, uh, we had a question. Someone asked where you get the a combo set from. Uh, rings in, in the store. We don't have combo sets, I don't think. We might go go look in the CC store, uh, and if not, hit me up offline, and I'll I'll let you know of a cup maker that you can that you can find that will get you such a thing, because it is sort of a special thing in these days. You know, you have to you have to have it made. Uh, but there are some lower level ones that exist. You know, the ones that are, that we we have in the store are you know going to be like a hundred dollar set of cups or less. Uh, the ones I'm speaking of the, the that are these higher dollar ones, they're you know they're a weighty cup and they've, you know, they're spun in a way so that you can't see that the magnets in there and it's a whole they're, thing. Yeah. They're made from unobtainium. 
totally, it might as well be with the price <laughs> you're going to pay <laughs> when you start looking at those high end props like that. But to play with the concept, you can get in for about a hundred bucks and you can, yeah. you know, and, and again, if you can't find it in the CC store, hit me up afterwards. And, uh, and it's something everybody should play with. It, totally is something everyone should play with. I must admit that I am playing with it pretty heavily right now. I love the idea. Uh, I think that there's a lot of potential in it. And I'm, you know, I'm probably about four years or so into the playing with the combo stuff. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface on it, you know? Yeah. But John's routine is definitely a great starting point, you know, because yeah. it's sort of influenced a lot of people and it was a starting point for a lot of people. So uh, it influenced me a ton as a teenager. Yeah. yeah you know, too. It was just really a big deal. Well, I, I always, I always idealized it. I was like, one day I'll be able to afford a set of combo cups, you know, because I spent my oh. money on cards and coins, you know. <laughs> Alex, man, I got a set of combo cups when I was a kid in New Jersey. I went yeah. into the magic shop, uh, Mecca Magic, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Shout out, yeah. you guys are way out of business now, right? Way out of business now. And I said, I want to learn. I have a set of combination cups and balls. What do I do? And he put the John Mendoza routine in my hand. In the very beginning of that routine, it says one late night at the Chase Park Plaza Hotel during the Midwest Bank Jubilee, me and this. And he's just like laying out like all these people that are sitting around this table. And just as a teenager laying in your bed, like reading the beginning of that. And it just seems like this magical hotel in St. Louis, which was a place you were never going to get to, where people just sit around and they're like romancing the cups and balls. You're like, I want to go there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, I want to sit in that session with those guys. I just want to stand in the back of the room. You know? <laughs> yep. Well, the closest you get these days is CC, right? Like you get to hang out. It's and better than that. It's better because it you're really is. Cause you actually get to hang out and brainstorm on ideas. Right. And those, yeah. those are idealized things that even if you saw one of those things go down, like you'd be a fly on the wall watching yeah. those guys do I'm that. I'm not going to open my mouth. I don't think you'd be invited to open your mouth. <laughs> Probably not. It's <laughs> very funny. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's the afternoon astonishments. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Thank you very much.